What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Try Time Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Callum. And this is episode 81, the Super League Dream Team. Yep. How exciting, honestly. We're, You're really we're... selling this up. You know, first 30 seconds, engagement is key, and you come in this little hype for it. I'm loving this. No, I think it's it's an exciting time of the season. Literally, the season's just finished in terms of the normal league phase in the Super League. Game you of tell your opening line that, because at the moment I might as well have said, welcome to flogging a dead horse. Well, well I feel like the Dream Team is it's such an interesting concept that it, it's a weird one, really, because it's like, it's just an opportunity for people to moan, isn't it, really? Anyone else in sport has been opting to celebrate individual success of players at Newark Rugby League. We love a good whinge. Yeah, basically. That's what I mean. It's That's what it is. It's like, it, it's just an opportunity for people to complain. And then when a player who's in that team does some of shit in playoffs, oh, well, that's why he shouldn't have been. It's just stupid. It's a bit of a, a flawed system, really. But it's something for us to talk about, which is, which is always good. Um, free media content. Stop moaning because it's a good one. Yeah, it's exactly. It's awesome we've got a we can going. prep our own dream team and see whether or not we agree with what the selection panel have gone for. Yes, yeah, so we've got our own dream team. We've got obviously we'll preview the actual playoff matches that we've got in Super League, and we've also we'll touch on going into the last week of the championship and the various permutations of what can happen at the weekend with that. So I guess we'll get straight into it with what should we start with? What do we reckon? Well, should we go through our dream teams first and then see whether we agree? So I'm going to pull the actual one up as well. Yeah, I think it's easy. I'm to get my second screen working. It's almost easier, I think, for me anyway, to use... Because the, the core is the, is the same. Use the current team and then, like, kind of where I change bits, potentially. Well, that's what I mean. Like, we might as well run through it and see. But I think... It, it's important to say, like, we're going to swap some of these players out. I don't think any single player in this Dream Team is a bad player who's had a bad season. No, I agree with There's that. There's no, like, glaring, absolute, like, how the hell has he got in there? They're all good, and they've all had good seasons. Yes. It's just there's other players who we may think have had a better season and deserve more recognition. Can I also appreciate that they've taken the opportunity now to on the Dream Team website. Here's the links to buy tickets for the playoffs. <laughs> They're actually doing some marketing for once. What is going on, by the way? This is not what I don't know. Have you seen the picture, the team picture of the Dream Team when they just stood in a local park? Have you not yes. seen this? Yeah. Like, yes, I have. It is tragic, mate. Come on, like. <laughs> well, what I love, I mean, I was planning on getting last year's Dream Team shirt out to do this podcast in, but Christ knows where it is. It'll be somewhere down the back of my the collection which is way too big for its own good but yes yeah, so that could be next next year we'll find out whether or not i can get this year's and just be still a year behind and then you will have to take one each yeah yeah potentially but i do think it's like because you, you've obviously arranged it's the week the week of the playoffs obviously not all these players are going to be playing this weekend some of them seasons are done but like you've got them all together somehow i don't know when there's one person whose season's done the rest of us still going on yeah. All right, they might have a week off, but yeah, true. But anyway, but you've got them all together, is the point, and you're just yeah. in, a, in a park like they haven't gone to like you know, Old Trafford. Maybe just get them one picture of Old Trafford, that'd have been great. Like, I mean, yeah, you could have even gone to a TW and because of them being league leaders and stood them there, yeah. But I don't know where they've met, have they met in the middle of all teams? You know, luckily, there's no Catalans players. That Maybe been that's why there's no Catalans players. <laughs> Just for the pure logistics. Twelve of them and one of them on a Zoom link in top corner. Well, I mean, outside of Lewis and Mincelli, you, 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 and obviously Martin, who's lead, you very, you kind of won't be too hard to get them all together outside of them three players. But no, that's very true. I, but, I still, it's just I don't know. It just it's absolute black, like some of the stuff they do. It's just comical in it, really, but. Um, should we start with fullback though? I think that's probably best. Are we just positioned by? I suppose position? we should. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I'll go first because I agreed with what was selected and went for Matt Dufty. Yeah, it's interesting Dufty because I think he's probably the third best in the league. But 
Fields had an injury ridden season and so as well as this week. It just had to be dufty because he has also been... And also he's actually put really good numbers this year. Like, yeah, let's not beat about the bush. I mean, he has actually delivered as well. This isn't just like they've picked some random player who's been fit. I don't actually think there's any other options either, really. No, I mean, I'm looking at the stats here. Like, he's made the most metres in Super League this season, which is obviously a massive part of getting his team on the front foot. He's got some great intercept tries along the way. And he's got the third most carries in the entire league. Well, It's yeah, exactly. quite... The stats don't lie in terms of that he rightfully is the player in there. I mean, who else are you going to really go for? No, sorry. I'm, my mind maybe goes to Briley. But again, but, like you look at the try scorers, and he's the only full back on that list. And he's with fourth place and 17 tries as the regular season comes to a close. Like it's genuinely been a fantastic season. And fully fit, I think there's still an argument he'd get in there, even if the other two had played. Oh, yeah, potentially. It'd have been an argument, definitely, which at the start of the season, we would have predicted it'd be one of either Wellsby or Field. Yeah. So, it's one of them. But fair play, he's raised his game this year. And then, I guess, wingers, really, because I, I know some of these we're going to be speaking about more, so let's we'll skip past. Uh, wingers, again, I agreed. The top two in the league, I mean, Marshall's averaged over a try a game, which is a fantastic record. I mean, Marshall has to be there for the try scoring. Um I guess I do like Ashton, but I think there's a lot of good wingers in the league. It's hard, really. Um, and yeah. yeah, see, I don't think there's anyone who's been as consistent and deserving of that spot. So that's interesting that you're going to throw you're going to throw someone like Josh Charnley in, aren't you? I see. I Josh Charnley. The reason why I don't think he should be in it, but I could have seen him being in this because there's a whole he's try scoring. He's, records break, break, you know, it's probably going to end up breaking and stuff like that. And he's, he's, got, he's up there, isn't he? Try scoring wise. Um, but He is, but I mean, what? He's joint with, with Duffy on 17. You've got Ryan who's got the record this year on 14 and leads the carries. And like second highest meter maker behind Dufty. I'd say Ryan Hall's got a stronger case than Josh Chandler. Potentially, because I guess the team's playing better as, as well, really. Um, but yeah, I think in all honesty, it kind of has to be Ashton, really, unless you made an argument for Fulis, um, who's obviously the other Warrington winger. Yeah, but Ashton um, had a better season and in the same team, it's a very difficult argument to make. Also, side note, Dufty, going back to 19 try assists, that is insane. Oh, he's it, been electric, hasn't he, this year, Dufty? Um, fair play, because I think we've been critics of him in the past as well. Um, and we probably didn't have too many eye up to him going into the season, but. Fair play. No, there's only one player who's got more try contributions than him in the entire league, and we can probably guess who that is, and I'm sure we will certainly mention him. Well, it's one of two, one of two players, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, either Sneed or Lewis, isn't it, realistically? Well, it's, I'll tell you now, it isn't Mark Sneed, because he doesn't score many himself. Yeah, that's why I wouldn't have said him, but I know his kicks do. It's 19 try and 24 try assist, Mikey Lewis. What an insane... Yeah, man of steel, that, isn't it? I mean, are we diverting here to who our man of steel is? Are we saving that for the end? We'll save that for when we get to Michael Lewis and both say that's who we think it's. <laughs> also, Great spoilers. As well, that is, we predicted that after the England Tonga test last year. We did. We called it then. We called it on that pod okay. after that. We did. Try time Oracle. Exactly. Not right, necessarily so. before kickoff on Sunday. This has the hallmarks of a Bradford play absolutely shit and come away without the win game. Yeah. What happened? Exactly. We oh, when he scored, but it was offside, even though he never grounded the ball and the ball real dead, remember? But, yes, I guess you'll be going to centre then because we're pretty much agreeing with him at this point. Yep, and I hate to continue the trend, but Wardle is definitely in there for me. Wardle's the best centre in Super League and we've been saying this all season. It had to be in there. I'm now going to throw my first controversial, well, not controversial, but my first one where I disagree in. Hickey yeah. over McDonald. Do you think that it's a toss of a coin, really? I think Hiku, what potentially hurts Hiku is, and this is not me saying that this should have knocked him down, but what could have knocked him down playing devil's advocate is the start of the season at fullback and how that didn't work. 
and some of the hilarious goal kicks as well. They might come in. <laughs> but I mean, I'd like to hope that they don't quite get factored in, but yes. Um, and McDonald, the fact that he's turned it around, so it's a bigger shock that McDonald had been this good. So when McDonald's has a good game, it's perceived as a great game because last year for Leeds, he looked all but done. And then, do you know what I mean? That could have been that it's all about the, perce- the perception and the perspective that you actually see it in. I think they're both great, though, to be fair. Either of them had to be happy, really. Again, I'm just going to look at the raw stats here. He scored three more tries. He set up 13 to McDonald's three. Granted, some of these might when he's been playing fullback, like we've not got a round by round and position breakdown. You know, nearly twice the meters. Generally, I think he's been involved in a lot of whole KR's good play this year. Whereas I know what you're saying about McDonald. He's definitely had a much improved season. I don't know if he's at that level. Yeah. I think it's one of them, really, with McDonald, where it's like, he could be a bit bit crap again next year. Not that he's, he's been crap, but like if his motivation's down or whatever, this could be one of them where he's just had one flash, you know, a purple patch season, and normality's resumed next year, whereas you'd imagine he could carry it on. I think there's a few other options, like Lafayette's been great as well um, at Salford. Yeah. Um, obviously, I mean, if we're talking the best two purely, just who you'd say the best two are, I think we're both probably taking Wardle and King, aren't we? Yeah. So, you know, I know King's not necessarily played every single game for it in this year and stuff, and that can factor into it. And also, you can't have too many Warrington players, and there's a degree of we've got to spread the spread the love a little bit. But oh, shout! You don't want to shout out eleven try Ricky Latelli then? Yeah. Shout out Ricky Latelli for me, yeah. Do shout, yeah. Yeah, outside I think, shot. I think he's had a very good season and some other years probably would have been in there. Again, he's got similar try set figures to what McDonald has. Yeah, what about Hak- Hakim Maludi? Maybe, does he make it? Let's not think <laughs> it. But no, I think there's no wrong with who they pick, to be honest. I don't have many. Grams. There's some good other options, but it wouldn't have been had gone for, but I can see why, and I'm not against it. And, and uh, just a, a quick one for you because we were both very set on Wardle. Where would Wardle go in your man of steel? If they want, forget the point system, like if you were just saying who the three best players have been, not the in the top three, not in the top three, right? Interesting. I'd put Marshall ahead of him. Mm. That's fair. Which I appreciate a lot of his tries have come from Wardle's fantastic service that he's provided his winger with. Oh, that, that centre-wing partnership is magical. I mean, if that's not the centre-wing partnership for the Samoa tests, sum it up. Um, but then, you know, I look at this and he's, what, what 15 try assists this season. It's a pretty good figure, but... It, that's a weird number, actually, because I'm looking at the top 20 here and there's some names I didn't expect to be on there. I mean, for Wigan, Fields had 12, French 14, Smith 14. They've shared them out. But, like, yeah, this is a really thing. Obviously, we'll get into who's top shortly, but Croft and Sneed both on 22. Evels has had 20. Yeah. Matt Miller, 17. Ollie Leyland in the top 10 on 16, I would not have expected. Yeah, interesting. It's quite interesting we start breaking down the stats, actually. Lola Hay is in there, bloody hell. Fucking Christ, hell. Jacob Miller, they must have had a poor season. Do we, need, do we need to stop the stats then if we've got Jacob Miller popping up in Dream Team? I mean, he's 19, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. But, but he's, he's, hey, his stats are proving, did you rank him high enough in your top 10 video? Well, maybe so. Um, I mean, I, I can't think off the top of my head of the England squad now who was in it, but I know Marshall and Wardle were both in it, weren't they? So do you just yes. keep that for the Samoa test? And then, is Farnworth in the squad? I feel like he was, wasn't it? Yes. So then do you just chuck Farnworth and Young centre wing on the other side? Well, surely that, that's the logical option. Is yeah. that the best England can do? I think that's why not go with that. I know well, that's probably gonna... harsh on it's probably harsh on Toby. We'll save this for the picking our England team pod in a few weeks and we need to milk the yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. It's, and then, but then, Following that, segue on your England standoff scrum half. I know Sneed's not in squad. Give me Lewis and Sneed. It's the best you can do. 
that are English, yeah. But I get why this is. I know we're on. To, this is a bit more England chat, before, but. I know that the reason why Sneed's not in there is because in two years when we've got World Cup, Sneed's not going to be at this level then, you'd imagine. No, the, you know why Sneed's not starting, it's dirt, yeah. Because he don't play for Wigan. Bingo. <laughs> but Sneed's got his love in the Dream Team, which we're, we're big Sneed guys, so we're happy with that. Yeah, because it's not Wigan by a selection committee. <laughs> Whereas he will always rank behind Wigan boy Harry Smith and ex-Wigan golden boy George Williams. Yeah, you should, I think it probably should be Lewis and Williams, though, shouldn't it? I, I would, mean, well... Not Dream Team. Sneed and Lewis is right. I think we're Dream both Team, definitely, yes. England, we've got a very interesting one we're going to dissect into where Harry Smith and Lewis Dodd fit into this equation. The interesting thing is... The third, like, I'm not seeing these as a standoff scrum half. Halves, I see these as because yeah. these two both play seven and the six and seven. And I know Lewis can play six, whatever. The nearest, the third choice in this out of these has got to be Williams, hasn't it? Right, not Smith in a logical sense. Williams is the one who's unlucky. If we're talking out. ability right now, yes. If you're talking about someone who's Realistically, going to feature in that World Cup squad and has the higher ceiling. It's probably Smith. But I'm not. But I'm talking dream team wise now. In terms of this season, they've just had. No, well, neither of them. Well, who'd be your third choice? Croft and you. Yeah. You can try and buy us all you want, but again, that. more try involvements than Sneed in what has been, frankly, a. Uh, pretty shit Rhinos team compared to what Sneed's had at Salford. He spent half the year playing under a pudding who wanted him to play as a second rower, to use Blake Austin's words. Mm. And yet he still managed to come out showing why he was worth the money that was put in for him. Because my biggest problem with Sneed, and don't get me wrong, we're talking pedantics here. That's why I'm comparing to Sneed because he's up against Williams, but anyway... The thing that the other thing that goes against Sneed is he's a great kicker and he's a great organizer off the boot, but he's not really got a running game the same way that a lot of the other elite halves do. And that's probably why Williams is favoured to him in an England setting as well, because he has that running game. Yeah, Williams is more of an NRL. Williams and Lewis are the perfect six seven NRL type halfback combination. Yeah, Whereas and that's where on. Dream Team Sensi Croft comes in. I think out of the sort of more running halves here, he's probably had the next best season. Yeah, that, that's fair. That, that's, that's fair. I think, you know... Other, well, actually, no, I know who I'm picking instead. Well, it's not Byron Mayhem, that. Day, won't we? Go on. Can't well, know. Let, let's get to it. So we're saying that Mikey Lewis is... Six for both of us. Yeah, and he's Man of Steel as well for me. Yeah, he is as well. Yeah. God. Seven, I was debating leaving Sneed out, wasn't I? That's disgusting. For Camp Agnolo? No, for Lachlan Lamb. Oh, shit, yeah. No. Which I also think is a very fair shout. Six tries, 24 assists. Lee obviously have had a fantastic second half of the season, despite a very ropey start. And he's probably there. He's probably their equivalent, really, in terms of marching them around the pitch, especially with having that experience of Moylan playing in that spine with him. It's brought his game on a lot. No, I, I agree. He's been great. I, I, my thought, my think, thought process now is like: so, if you've got your halfbacks, you know, if you've got your five half best halfbacks of what they've been this season in terms of ranking them for the team, based on who we've spoke about. We've both got Sneed and Lewis at least in that top five. Sneed, Lewis. Williams. Lamb, Croft, Williams are probably my top five. Yeah, which I would agree on. And it's like, but realistically, their third choice when the selectors selecting a dream team would have been Harry Smith. Yeah, who I don't think had a great season. Yeah, I'd probably, he'd probably be sick. He's good in parts, but he's not been... It's really, and no get me wrong, it's difficult in that Wigan team because you're sharing a spine with arguably the two best players in the league in French and field. Yeah. But, but they, he looked 
the weakest of the three. And that he consistently looks the weakest of the three. Which that doesn't necessarily mean to say that he's a bad player by any means, because, you know, you're competing with it. You might have just cut the most amazing thing you've ever rustled up. If you're up against two Michelin star chefs, you're going to look shit every time. Like, yeah. But it's he is. With Wigan and them, sort yeah. Of them, them positions. Because even, you know, there's players knocking on door in them positions. Like Eckersley's coming. I know he's played a lot of centre this year, but he's a full back and he's looked great when he's played Farrymond. Look at Farrymond at Magic. He was mm. arguably the best player on pitch in that game. Like, and that's where I think Smith's problem almost is, because if he's the one that doesn't ever really look like he shines, he's going to be the one that's shuffled around. Maybe. Because you don't, you know, French, I think, is the first name on the team sheet, frankly. Well, French I mean, would feel so- like two of the best three players yeah. in the league, realistically. Yeah, but French is better than Field. Yeah, I would Without agree on that. Shadow of a doubt. I'd, pro- I'd probably rank him French. I'm talking like the top three players in the league, probably French, Wellsby, Field. In terms of flair, like, don't get me wrong, I love a good prop that can do it all like Paul Vaughan, but I'm on about, you know, them sort of players. You, yeah, you sort of spine them. players. Yeah. See, I think this is this is the other thing, like, you know, we, we, when you did your top tens, we had people calling for French to be up the top of the fullbacks list despite him being a six. Yeah. I don't think you can do the same with Field. No, Field, field probably a better six work. than Jacob Miller. Well, I mean, that's... Yes, he's a better <laughs> six than Jacob Miller, but I mean, Jacob Miller won't get in the Wigan team. But, like, <laughs> we'll he starts then, I think, as a out-and-out six, Field starts performing worse than, like, your Mikey Lewis's, your Brody Crofts. I don't think he's top... He's certainly not top two. Whether he's top three, I'm trying to think who else I'd put in there. I mean, French is the top... French can be a top five player in all of the backs positions. And he could probably do a stint at loose forward as well if you wanted him to. Like, do you know what I mean? You play him in centre, he'd do it. He's played wing before, for fuck's sake. Like, he can do it. He's unreal. There's play, players of his calibre do not come at Super League at the point well, of his career when look, he did. Bevan French was a winger, remember, just two years ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's played fucking every... He's, he's got five in one game on... No, it's six in one game on wing or something stupid. Yeah, he's a joke of a player, to be fair. But, um, but yeah, that's... Let's not glaze Wigan too much. I know, I know, Dean will be be listening or watching. He'll be absolutely loving it as a Wigan fan. Um, so there's a little shout out to Dean, who I know communicates a lot with us on social media. Yeah, like um, that's enough Wigan love, right? We need humbling props. Luke Thompson. <laughs> oh, for God's sake! So obviously they've got Thompson and Lee. Where are you standing on that? You sound like you agree with Thompson. No, no, I, I just knew Thompson were coming. I just thought it was quite ironic, really. What was yeah, saying. but ironically, I'm going to say that neither of them two deserve to be in, so it's time to do some Wigan bashing. I think, that, again, like we say, they've both been good, but I would Yeah, sorry, I, Lee's doesn't deserve to be in full No, no, I agree. Lee's, Lee shouldn't be in the conversation, but I think in a struggling Saints side, he's, he's easily their best prop. Forget Wormsley at this point. He yeah, is. but again, he's, he's carries per metre, his total carries and everything are worse than what Oletsky's doing in a pudding lead side. Yeah, well. And he's carrying the weight of four props on his back, whereas even when Saints have had struggling, they've had blooming Passy, who's in their supposed best <laughs> lot. No, you know, you know, I won't get you started on your opinions on Ignatius Pass. Why is Parsi coming up in a fucking dream team? Fucking oh god. Anyway, Thompson's been great, and obviously Wigan are great, and they've got a million great props. I, you know, there's a lot of props. That Tyler Dupree, who's, I think who's not great. Who's that gone? They've got a million great props and Tyler Dupree. Yeah, I know you're not a Tyler. I mean, no, I'm not a fan. Great. Yeah, I know. But yeah, I know. But I've got to play. I've got to play the fucking devil's advocate, mate. We can't just hear. No, you do. Stop chatting bullshit just to try um, and make friends. Tom and Moan, for me, he's got to be in the conversation. Okay. And there's a reason why he's got he's got a decent contract down in NRL next year. Let's be honest. Yeah, I fully agree he, with that. He's completely. I've not picked him, but I agree. And we've got Sue, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have been bothered if it were them two. I, I wouldn't mind if it were Thompson and one of them. I'd probably say 
the season all okay, I've had, the fact that they finished second, I'd give it to Sue. I've got Sue in. Yeah. Um, and I've got very rogue for my other one. Your other one? I can't remember who your other one is now you've told it's me. It's the leading offload in the league. The one positive shining light. Oh, fuck it. Being a this is bollocks, year of recruitment. This is the most bollocks pick ever, by the way. Not the most it. bollocks pick ever. It is. Herman SAS, I know I'm going to say it. I've spoiled it for you. Yeah. It's SAS, it deserves fuck. recognition. But, right, you know what? If SAS is in this conversation, where's fucking Emmanuel Wayne? Fucking get He's barely bloody played. <laughs> No, I'm well, sorry. Yeah, he's got more offloads than anyone else in the league. He's got more meters than anyone else in the whole FC squad. He's about the only shining light in terms of who they've brought over and who, you know, looks like he's a competent professional player. No, I agree on them points. Like, he's, he's a good prop. I had him in my top You put him in now, any of the top six teams and he's absolutely barnstorming his way into that team. A hundred percent, obviously. Uh, on overall as a player, yes, but Paul Long's had a Paul bit Long's of a hit in this season. If we're talking at who, if they all turn up, put in a 10-10 performance, who's the best prop in the league? Paul Vaughan wins it hands down. Yeah, with probably a more than second, I'd maybe say. But in that conversation, yeah, you know? but then you win know, win dream win team's win not win just win. judged on who's the actual best player on a one-off no, game. No, it's over league. a season. I get that he's been... And over a season, he has dragged Hull FC. What, to, so, to fucking 11? <laughs> look, just. <laughs> we can say this all we want, but you could put blooming prime Jason Tamalolo in that squad and with rest at crap he's had around him that still finish 11. Wait, how many tries has he scored this year, Statman? Two, but he's a prop. Two. Well, what I'm just thinking, I didn't know if you were going to try and swing it there. If he hadn't scored them tries, then, then they'd have got fucking bottom place because of points difference or whatever. But No, I haven't bothered to look where he scored them two or where he assisted his yeah, other one. But, no, I agree he's great. I, just I do like, love that he's only one offload ahead of Hakim Maloudi of all players and then they're like, absolutely then clear of El Zaka. Yeah, I imagine, I mean, Maloudi's one of them. He just, I think that's all he does, isn't it? Offload. I think he's scared to get tackled at this point. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot in that conversation. For me, my two would probably be Amon and Sue. Um, and I guess and you're going Sue and and an SAS, which is a an all East Yorkshire Humberside. Uh, well, we've, we've bashed all FC enough this year. It's nice to actually pick a player out for some positive performances. Yeah, I guess. And you don't get used to it because there ain't any more coming. Yeah. I mean, all FC probably, all F, no all FC fans are watching this. They've seen title, Super League, our Super League dream team, playoff predictions, and they're like, well, I'm not fucking got what to do with that. I'm not watching Well, they're that. missing out then. So <laughs> any of your whole KR friends, tell them that they've actually got a mention for something positive this year. Yeah. And without yeah. further ado, then, we both agree that Jaden Ockenbar's in at second row. And we're not doing Ucker first? Yeah, we could do if you want. I mean, Ucker, I think, is pretty run of the mill. I, I personally think Danny Walker. Yeah, I've gone Danny Walker. Yeah, it's it's gone my way. I mean, over options, I think Litton and Parcel, but I think they're like a good combo, a good duo that I think they cancel each other out almost in getting on this. If you had a bent, the problem is neither of them have played enough minutes, Frank, because it seems to be that one does an hour and then the other does the last 20, whichever way around they do it. I yeah, think Parcel's yeah. had the stronger season. Yeah. But, you know, only just. It's been a very close run thing. They're probably both in the conversation in terms of, like, who is next best. And if we're talking about, I guess, putting the England hat back on, where does Lytton rank? Because, I mean, Walker starts. Clark's had a poor season from which go watch the disappointments video I did on Saturday if you want to hear more on that. I still probably, I know, I don't think Clark's in the squad, is he? Have I got that right? I can't remember. I don't think, I'm not sure. I don't think. I can get it up to it. I'll find it. Um, keep talking. Just Because so. I'm kind of thinking there are a few names in there. It's, is Clark still in there or are we accepting he's on his way out now? Obviously, I think Walker's the star. I mean, Canberra were after him for a very good reason. You've then obviously got this up and coming crop that's like your Brad O'Neill's and your Jez Litton's. You've obviously yeah. had Andy Akazu was at the World Cup, but hasn't really had a great season at Leeds. 
often getting outshone by Jared O'Connor, who is, if we're talking utility options in terms of a good 9 and 13, probably not totally out of suggestion. Yeah. And I'm struggling to think of anyone really other than those well, in terms of English hookers who you would suggest. Because McLaurin's over the hill. I'm sorry, he's not get, he's yeah. not coming. Well, I've got the England squad and there's three hookers in there. But I only think one of them's going to play. And because right, the well, Walker's going to play. There's Walker, Clark and Lytton. But Which I think Radley, he's a sensible three to go for. But I can see him doing Radley playing hooker, which he did in Tonga tests at times as well. Because they Yeah, which is kind of why I say if you want in that 9-13 cover, that's where kind of, depending how O'Connor goes over the next few years, he's not yeah. the worst shout in the world because he offers you that dual position because option. I think we're actually blessed in terms of like back rowers and loose forwards. I mean, like I'll just list some of these. Obviously, there's Bateman who probably will play, whether he should or not, I don't want to say, but then you've got obviously Ben Curry, which I'm not even going to really necessarily yeah. touch on, but like Knowles, McMeek and Minchella, obviously Ensemble's going to play back row, probably with Pierce Paul. Then there's others. Where do they yeah. go? You've got Radley, you've got Smithies who's going to play. Like it's a tough. Can we all appreciate that Morgan Nill should not be near this squad? No, I don't know. I probably could have just that. said there. Not when there's that many good players in that. I mean, we could end up with an all all NRL back row in terms of them three positions, but I don't. Well, think I'm just thinking, there. when was the last time that happened? Because I remember Probably. back in the day we had Gareth Ellis, Chris Hyington, but who was playing 13? Well, I mean, then? to be fair, mate, we are saying that literally the last World Cup we had that. What, we had Bateman, White, White and Radler. Radler. Yeah, so. It's a thing we've had yeah. recently, to be fair. Yeah, to but be fair. I imagine we like Smithies and stuff might end up playing a stint in a prop. It's, we're really blessed in I mean, I'm kind of thinking there. actual English players, to be fair, because Radley's Radley, yeah. not English, neither was Highington. Yeah. The last time I had an all actual English people playing. To be fair, well, in the NRL is a long, long time. It's not. In terms of them three back them three back row positions. Well, a bit of a white and yes, who have you got at 13 then? Sam Burgess. Which we did he's play that. A prop. We did play him there, though. Give over. Played... I'm not having p- square pegs in round holes. We played him. At... Well, we played him at fucking back row, didn't we? When more we played him at back row, and we had Bateman in centre. <laughs> Wasn't that GB or something stupid? No, we had him. At, he were eleven in what the 2013, maybe. Well, this Wayne Benny on his mad role. No, this yeah. anyway, we've gone off a massive tangent. Danny Walker is the hooker, right? We're agreeing. Yeah, second rows. Ensemble, obviously. Yeah. Justy, I know you're obviously a really smart guy, and he definitely would be the third player. For me, Kai O'Donnell has got to be in there. I'll be yeah. honest, I was tying up between them three. And yeah. in the end, I thought I'll keep Martin just because of how crucial he is as an overall player. And, you know, as much as I was saying on Hiku, go kicking shouldn't be tracked, it's probably added to Martin's, to be fair. The game that sticks out for me is. Uh, after 80 minutes, London Broncos 20, Reese Martin 20. You want to tell me that's not important to a team and carrying something on your back? No, I agree. I think, and you know, don't good. get me wrong, Kyle O'Donnell's had games when he has easily been the best player on the pitch, too. Yeah, I think Kyle O'Donnell. Well, the only one who hasn't is in Semba, but that's playing more a token to how much talent is around him, whereas. You know, Lee and Leeds don't have that in quite as many places. Yeah, it's an interesting one with Incembe. I almost wouldn't have minded him not putting him on this just because he's going to get on it in future anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Like, whereas I think it'd be nice for O'Donnell as a leader. Yeah, you say this, unless someone snoops in the NRL and's like, yoink, I'm having you to do Well, that must happen with O'Donnell, isn't it, to be fair. Um, O'Donnell's yeah. off that down under, which is fair play, he's earned that, to be fair. You can't, no Incembe. complaints for that, yeah. Um, but I don't think there's anyone else really in that conversation, back row wise. No, I aren't going to start throwing offloads into this because that's more, that's not the job of a second row. You're not what is that, El Zakim, who you're going to suggest? Absolutely not. He does not deserve it. <laughs> no, in terms of other ones, I mean, KR boys, but again, I almost feel like it's hard with that KR team because none of them stand out because it's such a well run team as a whole. Like, yeah. there's no superstars outside of Lewis. It's a well-oiled machine, isn't it? 
Yeah, like I kind of agree with you, really. There's not really anyone else. I, I mean, again, if I dig into the stats, what sort of stuff do you really look for, like carries and things? Kind of one of those positions where it's kind of you do, you're not expecting anyone to stand out anywhere. They kind of just do everything well. Yeah. But so should yeah, to go on to loose. Yeah, which obviously they've got Minchella. Have you agreed with them? Yeah, I agree with Minchella. I, you know, I'm a Minchella. I'm a Minchella guy. Uh, from his yeah, your, Brad, your Bradford connections coming in there. I've gone differently, by the way. I know, I know who you've gone with, and I think he's great. And you know how much I like the player you've gone with as well. Like, and also, it's his chance favorite. to get. It would have been his chance to get him before he goes down under having cost on for Mike Nicholson. Yeah. Um, both. Do you potentially find a way to shoe on him in back row? Maybe, maybe you do. But for me, I think what factors into that is you've already got. Um, you need they needed at least two KR players. So you know, we're yeah. saying about actual English players playing in that back row who are actually in those positions and not square pegs. There's another one for your list: Smithies and Nicholson is battling it out for loose forward. The problem is Nicholson's not in the squad for England, which is he is for this one. But you'd imagine looking at the World Cup. Oh yeah, easily. I that's going to be tasty. Like. How does I, I, I like Mullern, but he shouldn't be in that squad over a player like Nicholson who you're bleeding in for the future. The problem is we're very short on props. We don't like we've got the best back rowers going, but we don't have that many great props. Like McMeekin's probably going to do a stint at, at prop. Yeah, so, yeah. Like and protect, like I'm saying, potentially Smith is outside of like your Tom outside. Well, you're of, taking Matty Lee's, aren't you? Given he's just got him bloody t- dream team. Luke Tom- Thompson is is up there. He's good enough to be. Chris Hill. I'm a Chris Hill guy, right? Oh, for God's sake. Not. No. I'm, no, should. I'm shutting this down there. St- stop. No, I'm saying he shouldn't be in the England squad, and I love him. That, that's what This is how bad it is. I'm saying he shouldn't be there, but he's there. Have you finally converted to the light away from the dark side? I've always, you know, like, and the fact is, Chris Hill's my sort of prop. I love a prop who just does the job well. And I, you can't tell me Chris Hill's not been a great servant to he has, but he's also like 402 years no, old. He aged as well. That's best thing. He's not even going to have a club when he's playing. <laughs> well, he's going to end up somewhere, isn't he? Like, yeah, also, I mean, there's a pod in itself. Where's Chris Hill going to end up other than Turkey for some new air? Right. Like, that's got Wakefield or something written all over it, hasn't it? Or Cass. Yeah, Cass love an aging pensioner. He's like the new Gareth Widder. Yeah, he'll end up at Fax then, won't he? Um, Won't be shit. (laughs) But, so yeah, I think we're we're sort of there with where we are with with them. Um, And that's our dream team. So, ooh, I know there's been some names thrown around on social media, but if there's any others that you think we've missed or need a mention, let us know uh, down below around that. And should we get into prediction this weekend's big playoff games? Well, we can probably go through this quite speedily. So, I mean, we'll start in Super League as always. Um, Saints and Warrington. We'll start on the Saturday game just because why not? Because you just want to be a bit of a prick, yeah. Well, that's fine. Well, because I think the other one's got the most talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, Warrington win that. Warrington I think. Win it. Saints, obviously, losing that game against Lee. Not necessarily a shock, but kind of significant of what's potentially to I don't know I was quite shocked by that I thought the prospect of a home tie um, obviously getting some of those key players back I thought they'd have enough to beat Lee the fact that they don't no disrespect to Lee but Warrington are on their dear better side by a decent bit yeah and the one it worries like, me that this points are proven really momentum as well um, which I think is a big thing. And um, what, yeah, I just got. Well, Warrington, see. let's face it, if Warrington win this, they've got a very tough trip over to Hull KR. So they'll want to come with full form. Yeah. They're not going to be like, wrestling. this has potential to be ugly, I think. Yeah, I think it, it'll be a good game. I think Warrington. This could be like a 42 10 scenario. Oh, is that what you think? I think it'll be closer than that. But. I think this has got Warrington absolutely spanking him, to be honest. Mm, I think maybe a 24 10, something like that. I've got a statement being made. Oh, well, we'll have to see on that. But I think we've both got Warrington win, haven't we? Yeah, and then we get onto, I think, the juicier tie of the game. It was Salford, Salford and Lee. Yeah. 
Who are you going for? Well, it's the ultimate Sneed versus Lamb, isn't it, to find out who, who's better at for us two. Um, if it was at Lee, I'd go Lee. If it were at Salford, it's one of them. I think Lee at home are a different beast. Okay. I do think Salford just get over the line. I'm talk, calling it golden point. If it's at Lee, I think Lee win. If it's at Salford, I think Lee win. Wow. A big statement. I reckon golden point. Mark's need, 40 metres out, drop goal. Do you know what I honestly think is going to cripple them? The decision to put the kids out and lose 64 nil. Do you think? They've kind of had, the, and don't get me wrong, I know Rowley will get them fired up to an extent, but they've kind of had that week away from it, whereas Lee have just had a massive win to shut down last year's grand finalists and one of the most successful clubs in Super League history and block them from having any chance of getting in the playoffs. Yeah. They're probably the form team in the league, or certainly one of, considering where they were after the first half of the season, down in like 10th, and we were discussing whether they were going to have an absolute stinker of second season syndrome. And for all, Salford are a very good issue outfit that play good rugby and do things very well. Outside of a few players, they don't maybe have that quality across the park. That's fair. Do you see like do you see Lam as more of a game winner than and Moylan as well as more of game winners than I think Sneed is like, a great game manager when you're up against it and you kind of have something to hold on to. I think Lamb and Moylan are the ones that will create something. Yeah, I think it'll be a great. Now we know game. my opinion on Moylan's defence at fullback. I've said it before. Defensively, he's championship. Attack wise, he's NRL. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent convinced on Salford in the big games. Right. Well, I'm not. Salford and that's me there. saying this, who has a lot of praise for a lot of their players. I mean, Dion Cross is probably the underrated winger in the whole league, frankly. Yeah, that's fair. But, right, but Super it, League tick, championship, one week to go. Yeah. So, so losing Bradford guaranteed home ties. So, I mean, it's one of them. Well, let's go down the table. Wakey guaranteed first. To lose a guaranteed second. Bradford are guaranteed third. No can change them. Um, yeah. yeah. At one point this weekend, it looked like Bradford were going to get second. Basically, Toulouse turned it around and won. Bradford fucking lost because we're fucking shit. That's bad. That's by the by. Same problem you had all year. Yeah, have a crap. Yep. Um, the intrigue then comes in the next four positions as we've got Sheffield in fourth. York are fourth. Yep. Sheffield are sixth. On, on flash score, this is how the setup, which I understand now is wrong because I've, I've actually seen it on the points back. difference. It's York fourth, Featherston fifth, Chef sixth, yeah. and then Witness a point behind on seventh. Essentially, the permutations are these are all a point like within a point of each other. York play Fev, whoever wins that's in playoffs. Sheffield play yeah, whoever wins that's fourth, let's be honest. Yeah. Looking with where we are, points difference wise. Sheffield play Dewsbury, so Sheffield are in playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Witness play Barrow away, Widness win that they're in playoffs, as long as York is... or Feb lose. No, York and Feb draw. If York and Feb draw, they could both guarantee the playoffs. That's what I mean, as long as somebody loses that game, Widness yeah, yeah. Because Right, so what do we basically know? One of York or Feb will be fourth. Yeah. I well, can't see it being a draw, to be honest with you. I don't think they'll play out for that. Yeah. Which then means Sheffield are going to be guaranteed fifth because they will beat Dewsbury. That's basically just a fact. Yeah. I'm about one stop short of putting my entire house on it. So then you've probably got... And this is where it gets tight because witness you would expect to beat Barrow. But Barrow winning takes them guaranteed to their championship states and means they're not in that promotion race. So yeah. they have a lot on the line. Because otherwise, obviously, they're currently in 11th. Swinton yeah. are in the dreaded 12th, who are away at Bradford, who have nothing to play for. But you would hope Bradford win that game. I'm not. I've I'm watched not... you enough times to know that that's far from guaranteed. 
I don't know how we finished third. You think about points in this season where we have lost so many games, but fucking stupidly. How are we third? It, it kind of shows the craziness of the league, really, in terms of everyone's just beating everyone. Um, well, you're third because York were bottom for about 10 games. Featherstone was shit for a while, and Sheffield, since they've lost the coach, have looked basically the same as West Wales Raiders. <laughs> That's the thing, that no one's been consistent outside of Wake. Even Toulouse at points. Toulouse should not be second based on how... Like that, that'll that be their lowest points total for fucking Yonks, I tell you. I mean, did they lose to Swinton at home or something stupid? Yeah. I mean, With what a point. massive two points that is, by the way, now. Right. Put it this way, Bradford are three points behind them. How many games can you count that Bradford have thrown away narrow narrow games? And one of them were this fucking weekend, so there you go. Do you know what I mean? We should be yes. there. But it's his own fault. It's not like we've been done out of it, right? We've just not been consistent enough. But anyway, but, so Sheffield are in, York or Featherstone. That and we say are we just saying let's predict that game basically to decide? Let's do that. I think York. It's at it's at York, is it? Or at Fev? I don't I think it matters. I believe it's at York. It is at York. I'm gonna go York. I think Fev are too inconsistent, really. So I the think question York... then comes to Witness and Barrow. Can Witness do enough to steal? Steal the playoffs at the end, or are Featherstone going to have the blushes spared and be able to lose and stay in? Either way, I can't be bothered because either way, Bradford don't win that game in playoffs, so I'm kind of a bit annoyed either way. But do we back Barrow? I don't know really. I do personally. Barrow at home are a different beast, though, mate. Like you don't even the so yeah. Good. You say this, but they're still in eleventh. Yeah, I bet all I bet all nineteen of their points have come at home. I would I would put money on that. Obviously, I wouldn't, but I bet the majority of them are. I mean, I'm not going to lie. But let's say witness. Let's say witness. Essentially, what we are predicting is we're going to get a York Sheffield game. Basically, what we're saying is one of them's going to finish fourth and one of them's going to finish seventh. Yeah. <laughs> Realistically, let's do a quick... So, if we've got York, Sheffield, we're back in York, aren't we? Right, if we're going for that. So, Bradford, Widnes, Footnotes. Bradford, Widnes or Fev, either way, I think. I think we may... I don't I don't even want to predict it, to be honest. Man. We can do this more in depth next week when we've got... I'm going to say, I'd leave that one. But, I mean, either way, I think York beat Chef. Yeah, probably so. Um, I think any of these teams beat Chef, to be honest. Yeah, although well, Chef did have a good run against York at home. They were pretty solid. So if the do right. decide to play out the nil-nil draw and we have a repeat of that, then that could be very interesting. <laughs> but I guess should we get down to the bottom of the table, which, like we say... It's we much point we've basically covered that already in what we've already discussed. Yeah, because I mean, White are down. Pretty much, like yeah. Because there's that 200 been... point difference behind. Yeah, and, and then it's not winning all to play. Jude have been down since, what, before Christ was born. <laughs> so it's Barrow or Barrow or Swinton. Um I think it I think they both lose. Well, I think Swinton are more likely to win. No, that, I, I'm not being funny, mate. That's bollocks. Because No, that's it's bollocks. not bollocks. Because you've played absolute crap many a time this season. You've got nothing to play for, and you nearly coughed up against Batley, who aren't exactly much different. Mm. I don't know. And I that just was like when you were in the fight for second. Like, what have you got to play for? Nothing. A bit of form going into playoffs. I don't... That's all already gone. I don't know. We've got a lot to prove after last week. It'll be it'll be an interesting game. Two interesting games. This has Nathan Mason flop to flops a penalty to give Swinton a two point lead, win at the end all over it. He shouldn't be playing in this game. Well, neither should bloody Max Lehman, but I bet he'll start and all. Well, they probably will do because Tafu is still banned, but yeah. That's the well, I'd rather Smith start over him. At least have somebody competent. Right. Should we go on to the classic? Our favourite, um, to finish off, we've got to finish off with our favourite little playoff system. Oh, this is fun, isn't it? I mean, for, before we get into this, well, actually, let's get into it while we do well, it. We watched so, the game, didn't we? We watched the Keefley game. Holmes were narrowly beating Midlands at the end, which, you know, fair play for Midlands for being in that right to the end. Good showing from them builds really well for next year. We then watched probably the most pointless game in all time. And why was this the one that was on 
stream also. When it wasn't when a knockout game. played out a narrow, meaningless result against Rochdale. Where the where what did the winner get? Home advantage for the final. Basically guaranteed in the final. Like promotion game. In two weeks. And the yeah. loser gets to play Unslet again. <laughs> yeah, so we had Rochdale beating Hunslet in the eliminator to see who played Midlands. So now have to play Hunslet again, where the winner gets to play Keithley again. So, if so basically, win, this has been completely pointless. Yeah. So it. Yeah. We've so had we can't these Hunslet to win just so this actually has some relevance to life. This is going to be if Rochdale win beat Hunslet. This is going to be their fixture in the playoffs. Beat Unslet, lose to Keithley. Beat Unslet, play Keithley. In play the Keithley at Cougar Park again. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's the same a... venues now. Exactly. Oh, mate, come off it. Guess who their last game of the season were against? We're against Keithley. So they played Keithley, Unsley, Keithley, Unsley, Keithley. Well, either, yeah. And they beat Keithley in that game as well. I know. Oh, so dear. Plus, it should be a very entertaining final if Rochdale win. But what is the bloody point of this? It's stupid. And then the fact is the winner of that then is going to play this. Oh, it's just... You Swinton or Barrow away, yeah. We both see Rochdale beating Unslet because Rochdale played some good stuff in that game, to be fair. I mean, I've not seen Unslet to know, but yes, you would assume they're going as favourites. Yeah, so that's, I guess that's the one then. We'll see what... Eventually we might get to this final. (laughs) Well, I mean, what's that? That's this week. Then is it... Then it's the final that next week. Like, right, you know, week genuine and question at this point. The promotion match. Would you not rather that be a curtain raiser to the grand final than have it at the home ground of the championship team? Well, you could say that about the championship final as well. You could do all three of them as a triple header. It just doesn't work, though. Does it look at Challenge Cup? It just doesn't work. Yeah, but that's because... Yeah, but it works better than having it a random... I mean, what? There were 10k at Wembley, all of which were Wakefield fans, but still. Yeah, but if you get... Yeah, I'd say it works if you get Wakefield-Bradford in final, but if you get Wakefield to lose, you're just going to get 10k Wake, more than 10k Wake fans, probably. Yeah, but, like, you've still got them there. They're not going to go otherwise, and then the Old Trafford's attendance figure will come out. It'll be a bit crap, albeit up on last year, because Catalan out there. So you'll have people that then moan about the attendance figure. Like. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but that's an all other, other structural. And when else are Barrow going to get to go to Old Trafford, potentially? Um, I don't think it's good. You always want to finish 12th at this point. Yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's what they want, yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. Right, we've put the world to rights. Yeah. Oh, we've forgotten a playoff system. Go on. We've missed one of the obvious ones. It's the NRL semis. Oh, fuck. After we all thought Brisbane would be up there, they've not even made the finals of the fucking shit and finished 12. Yeah. GG's. I'm sure I would. Semi final time. Minor Premiers Melbourne up against third place Sydney. Hold on, because I've just gone on NRL women one. So let me get it up. I mean, I'm telling you what's coming up. Yeah, so Melbourne, Melbourne sit. So literally the top four in it. Made yeah. it to their semis. Yeah. Um, yeah, listen up. So it's going to be a Melbourne Penrith final. Well, the Shark. Shark's got dicked by Melbourne. Penrith Dick Sydney, so yeah, probably. Yeah, I think. What a fucking exhilarating stuff in it. I mean, the Roosters are the ones that have probably got the biggest potential to do something different in the semis, but I can't see it. Yeah, maybe. I don't think. I think Cronulla are probably as far as they're going to get. Yeah, I've just had that season to be the fair. Up. They've done all right to get fourth. They've not really been that. Impressive, I don't think. I mean, they narrowly got through Cowboys, but then fourth versus fifth, you'd expect a somewhat narrow game. The yeah. only interesting thing that's happened then was seventh place Manly beating sixth place Canterbury. 
The rest of it all went to form. Yeah. And even that seventh and sixth, it's like... Yeah. Not even It's going to be like if this all happens and we're looking at Lee Salford, fourth versus fifth. Yeah. We're looking at the same thing again, aren't we, really? Yeah. Right, there's a pod for a winter. Does the grand final work? Yeah. That's and, next week. Right, do you know... No, nah, we'll do that in the off-season when we're milking content. Right, we're going to keep this one under an hour, so 10, 10 to us for that. Uh, subscribe just for that alone, because when do we keep them under an hour? Yeah. Uh, you might want a shirt, forgot it again. Oh, yeah. Go watch yeah. somewhere else, we talk about it eventually. Um, yeah, subscribe yeah. on YouTube. I think that's, yeah. that's everything I've got. And yeah, give us your predictions for the playoffs and... And everyone chase Winton on Sunday. Right. Goodbye. Bye.